Oh, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today is December 28th, if I'm not mistaken, Monday, the year 2020. And uh, I just got a new phone, a Motorola Edge. So I just want to make a new video to test out the video quality. Uh, I paid uh, twice the amount of the other phone that was offered uh, on the basis that the, the camera is a lot better. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, what I want to talk about today, uh, what is on my mind, um, is uh, I got a few. Th I got a couple things on my mind. Um, let me just uh, let me let me pick one and go with it because I'm almost home and I have a lot to do. So I just really think that uh, we need to resist this mask nonsense um, because it is a it is a game it is a fool's game. It's an exercise in mass stupidity, and if we participate, then we are willfully participating in mass stupidity. And there's a great website called uh, despair.com. It doesn't sound like a great website, right? The word uh, despair. But anyway, it's a swipe. It's a satire. Um, it's kind of a mockery, a, a humorous mockery of the uh, successories um, line of products that you see in businesses where you walk in it. It has like an inspirational message and a really nice photo of, uh, say, for example, teamwork. You know, when we're all synchronized, we all work together. The sum of our efforts is greater than the sum of our effort. The sum of our collective effort is greater than the sum of our parts, yada, yada, so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, teamwork, uh, inspiration, leadership, uh, discipline, you know, all, all the things that, uh, you know, uh, make a business uh or any type of an enterprise uh, successful, you know, you see that. So despair.com is uh, satire, is same exact type of, of product, but they're satirical. So um, like the one I'm thinking of right now, they're hilarious. I mean, they're, they are just amazingly hilarious, but uh, because you see it and you think it's just another accessory, right? And it'll say, uh, like at the bottom, the one I'm thinking of right now is, um, stupidity none of us is as dumb as all of us and what that means is is that um, the dumbest things that have ever happened in the history of the world uh, are when people come together collectively and they do uh, you know dramatically stupid things because of the uh, you know because of groupthink basically you know um, the classic example, obviously it's not the only example, but it's the one that's on everybody's mind and there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole background as to why it's on our minds and on the tips of our tongues. But, uh, obviously it's the Nazis, right? I mean, they're not, the Nazis, um, would be a, the perfect embodiment or the perfect example of the principle that the despair product is talking about when it says none of us is as stupid as all of us, you know? So, because uh, no, nobody, nobody can do, nobody can accomplish the degree uh, of stupidity that a large group of people acting uh, or being propelled forward and motivated by groupthink. No single person can, can uh, exercise or enact as much stupidity as a large group of people uh, being motivated by groupthink can right so that that's kind of the principle and like I said the Nazis will be like a, a perfect 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 example of that but uh, you know also you know there's many there are many even in our in, in our contemporary day I mean look around you can you can find your own I'm sure but uh, so that's what the masks are they are an exercise in mass stupidity. Um, so we need to resist because if we don't resist, the the masks are leading to something, and it's not that hard to figure out, right? I mean, marketing. Everybody knows, or at least a lot of people know, that marketing is the practice of buying brain cells. Okay, so if nobody's ever heard of your product, 
uh, you're gonna have a tough time generating interest in your product. Nobody's ever even heard of it. If people have, uh, if everybody has heard of it, then by default, everybody has some level of interest. Maybe not enough to go buy it. Maybe not enough to uh, look it up and find out where to buy it, but they have, if they've all heard of it, they have some level of interest because people are naturally drawn to things that they're familiar with. And that's why uh, the example I like to use that I have personally experienced is when a uh, Chinese restaurant, a local Chinese restaurant, leaves a, a menu on my door. Um, the first time I see it, I grab it really fast uh, and I throw it right in the garbage. I don't even look at it. The second time I see it, I grab it, I look at it, and then I throw it in the garbage. I, I might look at it for a second or two. And then the third time I see it, I look at it, I probably make a mental note of the name, you know? And uh, I already know it's Chinese because Chinese menus kind of stick out because they have, you know, certain words or, you know, characters or whatever and, you know, like design motifs and stuff. I mean, they, they kind of stick out, you know. Um, so I'll make a mental note of the name and maybe look at the first dish or something like that and get the price or maybe I'll look at the address. But, you know, not more than one or two seconds, you know, and then I'll throw it away. The fourth time I see it, I'll look at it. And I'll be like, huh, this is interesting. Um, it's a Chinese restaurant. Oh, look, they're right down the street. Okay, I'll throw it away. Then I throw it away. But the fifth or sixth or seventh time I see it, I start having the thought uh, along that's something along the lines of, maybe I'll stick this menu in my kitchen drawer in case we ever want some Chinese food. You know? So that's how, that's how it works. That's how marketing works. That's why... It doesn't seem like it. it's this way anymore, but there was a time when everywhere you went, constantly, nonstop, you saw Geico ads. I mean, even to the beach, you'd see airplanes with banners. And if I'm not mistaken, they even had a, a, a floating, a, a, like a barge with a giant uh, Geico uh, billboard on the bar. I mean, it was just insane. On the television, on the radio. I mean, it was just a billboard. It was nonstop there for a while. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is now. It seems to have slowed down. Maybe it's just my perception of things. I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, there, there was a point that there's a reason they do that. And there's and it's the same reason that everybody does advertising is because they're buying, buying brain cells. They want to they wanna get their name fixed in your mind so that uh, the first thing you think of when you come across the subject matter of whatever it is that they deal with in case of Geico, obviously it's insurance, um, you know, auto insurance Geico. They want it to be automatic. They want it to be subconscious. They want it to be, uh, you know, like quantum, like, 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 uh, like quantum in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, Albert Einstein says if you have a, a uh, quark, uh, uh, you know, like a uh, proton or, you know, a quark or whatever at one side of the universe and, and a companion quark at the other side of the universe, even though those two quarks, which are like subatomic particles, even though they're not physically connected, they're energetically connected, such that when something happens to this one, the other one instantaneously knows. And there's like no, there's no time uh, trans. There's no time between the 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 event of one have something happen to it and the other one knowing about the event. There's no time. Um, so and obviously that's all very theoretical and all that kind of stuff. But that's what they say, right? And I think it has to do with like pole shifts. Like one is uh, one one is zero, one is one, and one changes to one, the other one changes to zero, or, you know, something. I mean, they it's all very theoretical. I mean, who knows what happens at one end of the universe versus, I mean, you know. But they have, they have their uh, theories, and they have their uh, paradigms, and they have their formulas, and, you know, algorithms, and they, they work it all out so that it makes sense to them. And then they come tell us about it. We have no idea what they're talking about, so whether it makes sense or not, who knows? We don't even know what they're talking about. But they give us like the third grade level of what they're talking about and you know maybe it's true maybe it's not i tend to think it's not but anyway that that's that's their theory the point the point being is that uh 
the marketers want the association between the product that they offer and their name to be associated instantaneously in our minds without us even having to think about it. So the masks accomplish this on an extraordinarily, in an extraordinary way. Everywhere we go, we see these stupid masks, which have no basis in science. You know, same number of deaths in 2020 as an average of the past five years or whatever, whatever, or, or last year or 2018, or I think it's the average of the last five years. Um, you know, you can argue whether there even is a pandemic. Pandemic, I would say there's not, but other people say there is. And uh, then you could argue, okay, well, if there is, do the masks actually do anything? And if, and if if there is a pandemic, I say no, they don't. Other people say there is. So the problem is not that some people want to wear masks. That's not a problem. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. I mean, I don't care. I'm not going to harass you. The problem is the people who want to wear a mask harass people who don't want to wear masks. See, there's a problem. There's an issue here. And, you know, it's almost as if, it's not 100%, but it's almost as if the Democrats want to wear the masks and the Republicans don't. And the, and the Democrats are harassing the Republicans, trying to make them conform to their narrative. You know? Um, and uh, it's, it's like I said, it's not 100%. It, it, has, it uh, has a lot to do with, uh, I want to say it has a lot to do with the old people. I really think it does. I think it has a lot to do with the old people. The old people, um, you know, the, the old people, you know, my, I'm talking about my generation. I'm talking about my people and my parents and my parents' generation. So, like, those three generations, I mean, you go past that, who knows what you, who knows what, what even happened back then, but in the context of, of, uh, of when it happened, of where it happened. Um, you know, they left, we left the younger generation a world of never ending war. We left them a world where millions and millions and millions of people were incarcerated for life for nonviolent petty crimes. You know, there's three strikes and you're out thing. Guy steals a cookie, steals a loaf of bread, steals a broken down bicycle. Three strikes, you're out, you're in prison for life. You know, I'm not sure that's, that's, uh, that something as trivial as those things could end up that way. I have heard that they do. So um, point being is, though, that you have, whether it's for life or not, you have millions of people in prison for trivial, silly, meaningless uh, things. And and we left uh, the younger, the old people, I'm talking about my generation and older, we left the world, uh, we left the younger generation a world of, uh, you know, like the elimination of an entire generation of Americans through abortion, you know, and infanticide. We left the younger generation a world where people like, Governor Northam, the governor of Virginia, arguably uh, one of the wealthiest states in the country. This, we left them a world where he felt comfortable going out on national radio and saying that we need to expand the definition of abortion to include babies that are born less than two hours ago. So that a mother and a doctor can have a conversation and he's, he's like a... He's kind of a Bill Clinton, hick, hillbilly hick type person, you know, and obviously they're not hillbilly hicks. They're, uh, you know, they're super elite, uh, super powerful, mega, uber wealthy um, rulers, basically, you know, imperial rulers. Um, but when I talk, they talk like this a little bit, you know, they, you know they, I don't know if they turn on that hillbilly. Uh, I don't know if they turn on that hillbilly charm to try to disarm people so that when people hear them speaking, they sort of subconsciously think, oh, this guy's an idiot. We don't need to worry about him. You know, just let him say whatever he has to say and get on. Or, you know, I don't know. Or if that's really the way they are. But that he sounds a little bit like that. Like Bill Clinton. Oh, I didn't know what to say. I never did that. You know, that Bill Clinton kind of came across that way. It, it good Norton kind of come across. I can't do his accent exactly, but it's not nearly as bad as what I, as uh, as I'm depicting it here. But in my mind, it sounds like that. Um, but he kind of well, uh, he's kind of sound like a, a, a conversation between a woman and her doctor. Maybe more than one doctor needs to ensue so there can be collaboration as to whether it's like and he's, they're talking about. Whether or not they're going to kill a newborn baby. That's what they're talking about. And 
he's a pediatrician by trade. Anyway, without getting into all that, the point is, this is the world. What I'm trying to say is, you know, they're using, they have weaponized the old people. They've weaponized the old people. They're using the old people to manipulate the young people, to intimidate and guiltify, to inflict with guilt, henpecking, hectoring, haranguing, nagging, okay? They're using the old people to harass the entire population. And it's the old people that left the dysfunctional world that we have. That the old people created that world. I think it needs to stop. I think we should be respectful to all people. But I don't think we should allow anybody to use their own infirmities to manipulate and intimidate and harass and harangue and hector and henpeck and nag us. And I don't think we should let people use somebody else's infirmities to manipulate, hector, henpeck, harass, nag, harangue, push around. You know, it's like I heard the other day, I think it was a Walter Williams quote, if, if he's the guy, the famous economist that just passed away, I believe it was Walter Williams. You know, he said, if somebody came up to you, punched you in the face, took your wallet, and took all the money out and threw your wallet back down in your face and said, I'm taking this for the poor people, would that be, uh, would we consider that to be an act of charity, right? And the answer is obviously no. But that's what they do when they take other people's infirmities and they use their infirmities to ha harass, hector, harangue, nag, henpeck, manipulate, intimidate, and abuse other people. That's what they're doing. And I don't think we should allow it to happen. And I think we need to resist right now. Well, I mean, people have this idea, oh, I'll just wear a mask, it ain't a big deal. Eh? You know, it's, not. it's like, what do you mean it's not a big deal? You're going to let somebody else <coughs> tell you what you have to do to protect yourself. No, you protect your own. Well, and then, and then, see, but then they pivot. Well, it's not for you, it's for other people. It's like, wait, what? See, there's something seriously wrong. There's something seriously wrong here. There's something seriously twisted here. And there's thousands of doctors that have signed protests that say the masks, there's no scientific basis for that. Now, I know there's other doc there's doctors on both sides, right? There's doctors on both sides. Okay, I understand that. Which is all the more reason, okay, to leave it up to our discretion. You want to follow that doctor? Follow that doctor. I'm following that doctor. But that's not what they do. They grab you by the shirt. No, you're going to follow the doctor. I chose to follow. And then they, they start throwing out the CDC. It's like, look, man, anybody that listens to the CDC is by definition, and I mean, I don't mean just listen to it because I listen to them. I listen to everything everybody has to say. But I'm saying everybody who blindly obeys what is, is by definition of communist, by definition, a communist. Because one small group of people telling 300 million I mean, uh, really, it's like seven billion, right? Because, like the like the uh, saying goes, when America sneezes, the world gets a cold, right? So, whatever the CDC says, it it has impact on the WHO, the World Health, and then the World Health Organization. I mean, and we just go around bullying the entire world with our medical, uh, you know, medical army, our medical uh, uh, bully pulpits, our medical tyranny, our little medical tyrants, and and there are. Tyrants in the medical, there's tyrants in every industry. There's tyrants in the medical industry. And they'll use moral responsibility as a club to beat you over the head, to force you to do what they want you to do, and make you feel like you have no choice, which is just evil. That's just evil. I mean, that's just, that. I mean, that's 100% evil. Everybody has a choice. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, you don't. I mean... If you think a mask will protect you, then wear a mask. And then why do you worry about whether I'm wearing a mask? Well, because you know, your breath comes over a mask. My breath? So now you're saying my existence is a threat to you. See? They're going to use the exact same argument when it comes time for the vaccines. And the vaccines are going to be piggybacked with the microchips. 
And then it's all going to be woven in with this thing of can you drive? Can you fly? Where can you get a job? Where can you get an apartment? Are you allowed to open a bank account? What day of the week are you allowed to buy groceries? What kind of groceries? What kind of store? Where? What part of town are you allowed to go in? I mean, it's all we got to resist now. If you wait till later, I mean, that's like, that's like not worrying about an invading army because they're in Georgia and they're not in Florida. No, you need to worry about it as soon as you know about it. And we know about it. We know about it right now. These masks is crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy town. There's all kind of videos that are still available. It's a miracle they haven't been all taken down. But, and just the fact that they're taking them down. That's all you need to see, that there's an invading army. When they start saying that normal people can't speak their minds, <coughs> that's an army. That's an invading army. That's a threat to freedom. That's a assault on freedom. And that is the definition of an invading army in, in the case, in the sense that I'm talking about it right here. So just the fact that they're taking down video. Look, if I want to say something stupid, I should be allowed to say something stupid. And so should you. And we should be able to make the determination, hey, Mike is an idiot. I don't even know why I listen to that stupid video. You should be allowed to make that determination. But no, we got people out in <coughs> Silicon Valley or, or wherever they are. I mean, they're the ones taking the heat. They're probably not the ones making the decision. They're probably just the do boys, you know, billion dollar do boys. We, we think of a billionaire as being like omnipotent. No, they're just somebody else's do boys, right? Um, but so like I said, whoever it is, somebody else is deciding that you can't listen to Mike's video. You know, should I ever, and I, I have actually, I've had one video, uh, taken down, but there are some people that have had their entire channels. Uh, I don't do enough really to, I don't know. And not enough people. So anyway, but point is it that some people have had their entire channels, uh, erased. First, they, they demonetize their channels and that's the way they made a living. So they take away their ability to do a living. Now their videos are playing and they're not making any money off of their work. And then eventually they just erase their entire, I mean, that's an invading army right there. And then they say, now we have to cover our faces <laughs> because if we don't, we're a threat to our neighbors. Man, this is crazy. I mean, this, we need to resist right now. And you can't, you can't have an excuse. Uh, www.thehealthyamerican.org. I got this uh, religious liberty uh, exclusion. It's got like the little, people love embossed seals, right? That's why they put embossed seals on uh, college degree diploma uh, or diplomas and PhDs. People, and it's got a little signature, see? Like a, like a diploma. Signatures and embossed seals. Supposedly, you know, that really impresses people. That's why diplomas and other types of official documents have uh, signatures and embossed seals. Because if you have a document with a signature and embossed seal, woo, wow, you're really fancy, right? So, yeah, you have that, www.thehealthyamerican.org. Like, 95, 98, 7, 97% of the time, people don't even read the thing. I just hold it up and say I have an exception. They're like, okay, fine, okay? Now, that works for now. It doesn't mean it's going to work forever. They don't have to. They don't honor it. My church, First Baptist Church, St. Petersburg. They don't. They don't care about civil rights there. They don't care about human freedom. I mean, they're they're like they're communists there. They're literally. I used to joke about them being communists. Now I think they are literally communist uh, because they're uh, how do you say? Uh, they're not just dogmatic. They're hateful with their political dogma and political doctrine, like literally. Uh, John Rice, the whatever pastor he is there, one of the pastors, he's bumping into me with his stomach because I wasn't buying, actually, because I wasn't obeying him, basically. He's bumping into me with his stomach. I mean, it's like crazy town, and it's just getting crazier, to be honest with you. And I'm not going anywhere because that's not what, that's not how I play, that's not how I roll. When I, when, that's just not how, I, I've been going there 20 years. I'm not, I'm not leaving, you know? Um, but, uh, that's, that's how it is. And in addition to that, I mean, I, I enjoy the, I enjoy the fight. I enjoy the rumble, you know, it, uh, I guess I, I was sort of made for it, but, uh, anyway, it's, it's crazy town, man. It's crazy town down there. And I'm sure that's not the only place, you know, St. Petersburg is like a, it's, it's like a little stronghold of communism to begin with. And a lot of people say that, not just me, not just me. A lot of people say that, um, 
and it's because of the mayor, I think, but, uh, cause, uh, like that old saying, a fish thinks from the head down, you know, but, uh, so uh, the, the, the first Baptist church, St. Petersburg is probably just a product of its, of its environment, you know, being in St. Petersburg. But I don't know, because even when other mayors ran there, it was, it was like that way back in the day, it was like that too. They've always been like hard left Democrat party, Marxist, communist, uh, like really like angry, uh, intolerant Nazi like uh, mentality towards oppose, opposing points of view, really. I mean, that's my experience. And, and I've always spoken out against it. Uh, but there has not always been social media. Back in the day when Walter Drawn was there, I used to send him emails, and uh, I think he was amused, you know. I think he took a lot of pleasure ignoring me uh, because he would, next time I see him, he'd be smirking at me, you know, like I, I sort of had the impression that he saw my email uh, and that he thought it was funny. That, that's kind of the impression that I had. But, uh, so they're, they're, uh, but now they're not smirking. Now they're not laughing, right? Because people like me have a platform now. So now they're actually getting physically confrontational. And now, and now te actually, they've uh, trespassed me from the church, so I can't even, I can't even go to the property. But uh, because I raised my voice, and then they accuse me of slander and violence. It's like, no, I just raised my voice. That's all I did. I did call Dr. Glenn Money a whore. So maybe that's what they talk, maybe that's what they mean by slander. I would, I would have, that's really like the only really like super provocative thing that I did. So that would, that's probably what they mean by slander. But I mean, that's my opinion. I think the entire leadership is, is, uh, is a, uh, you know, is like engaging in spiritual prostitution, which is what a whore is, right? Um, and uh, if somebody wants to take me to task on that, it's like, well, I mean, that's what God 